Hey, my name is Pete Holmes, and welcome to the Conan After Hours stand-up series presented by Pepsi Next, where we get to showcase some of the show's favorite comedians. Tonight's performer plays Gene on NBC's Up All Night, and this month he releases his second full-length comedy album. Please welcome, everybody, our good friend, Matt Bronger! Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Oh... A lot of movies coming out this, uh, this, this summer, good times. and I don't know, I, I, I have a t-shirt for the movie, uh, uh, The Harder They Come, which is a Jimmy Cliff uh, film and a great soundtrack. And I only bring it up because the star of the movie sang the theme song from the movie. He sang his own theme song. Like, nobody does that anymore. Like, yeah, like Will Smith, but he's rapping. I want to see a star that croons his own theme song, right? <laughs> Like, just once I'd like to see, ladies and gentlemen, singing the theme song of the hit movie, Inception. Please welcome Leonardo DiCaprio! And he comes out, Inception! It's a dream inside 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 a dream. Girl, it's a dream inside a dream inside a dream and, tr- and just goes on like that the whole song. Dream inside a dream, we must go deeper. That's the name. I'm not a big fan of catchphrases for comedians when a comic comes out and does a joke and is like, ham and eggs, and the crowd's like, ham and eggs, and I'm like, where's the joke? Um, But I love it when regular folks have, like, catchphrases. Like, there's an Italian restaurant in my neighborhood, which, first off, is so Italian. It's got the checkered tablecloth, the garlic hanging from the ceiling, the bottles of Chianti on the table. Like, the name of the restaurant should literally just be la 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 That song apostrophe S should be the name of the restaurant, right? And the guy that seats you has the best catchphrase ever. Like, first off, he looks like Super Mario if he, like, bought a condo. He, like, just got the mustache. He expects him to, like, jump and punch nothing and a coin to come out of the air. And when he seats you, he gets the menus. And, by the way, I go to this restaurant to hear this catchphrase. It makes my whole week. He gets the menus. He's like, table for four? Right this way. And he walks, got, like, a jaunty walk. And he sits down the menus and goes, okay, guys, it's spaghetti time. And walks away. <laughs> F yeah, it's spaghetti time, Mario. I'm beating up anyone who says it's not spaghetti time right now. Say that as you drift off to sleep. You will have marvelous dreams tonight. It's spaghetti time. You could give me the worst news of my life with that accent. I'd be at least a little bit cool with it. Do you have the test results, Dr. Mario? Yes. You got it, the syphilis. I do. Ah, all right. You're adorable. You put your baby in the wrong place, huh? Ah, I did, Dr. Mario. I've had to cut down on drinking recently, not for my health, just to improve my hangovers. Um, it's, it's weird, like, there's so much, I don't know if you notice this, they get so much worse once you hit 30. Like, in your 20s, your hangovers are almost fun, you know? You're like, hey, there's angry frogs in my stomach, my brain's on fire. All right, what are we doing tonight? It's a good time, right? In your 30s, hangovers are like, I'm gonna have a stroke, I think. My arms are numb, my brain is on fire. This isn't cool. Like, in your 20s, you make plans for your hangovers. You're like, uh, I'm not doing anything today except eating a family-sized bag of Ruffles and watching all the Rocky movies. That's it. Screw you guys. That's my party. All right. Right? In your 30s, you're like, I guess I'll go to the food court at the mall so someone might catch me when I have the inevitable stroke that's happening at 4 p.m. exactly on the dot. Hopefully die with some Panda Express in my stomach. We'll see. Like, here's the thing about hangovers. You have to order food that kills your body to heal your hangover. That is some horrific irony. Food that's bad for you to heal your hangover. And I would just get so messed up. I would order the kind of food that doesn't exist. Like a baby goes, later, later, but it wants a pickle. Like that kind of thing. Like, the waiter would come over and I'd be like, just, uh, uh, give me, uh, just, uh, just give me a, a plate of cheese babies and a hot boy. Whatever that is. I don't know what it is. Just make it. I don't know. I'm in such pain. And some ham dancers. Whatever those are. Just make them. Like, just once I want the waiter to know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, let me get a plate of cheese babies. Yeah, you want a gang or a tribe? A tribe! And, uh... And and give me some some ham dancers. How many? An armada! An armada! And a hot boy. What do his mood to be like? An angry! No, melancholy! Melancholy hot boy! And hurry, please... I don't know why there isn't a hangover airlines, honestly. To, like, how many times have you gone home from vacation hungover? 
every single time, pretty much. There should be a, like you pay 50 bucks extra for an exit row, 100 bucks extra, you fly hangover airlines. Like you get on, you get five Advil and a box of cheese. It's just for you. You sit down, you open the armrest, there's a tube, unlimited Caterade, suck away, right? All you want. Hangover airlines, everybody shut your freaking mouth. Be quiet on hangover airlines. Do not talk to me. I am so sick of being on a flight at 7 a.m. next to someone. I just had coffee. When I see a picture of my niece, hmm, I am sweating bourbon. Shut up. <laughs> but I'll leave you guys with this. I, um, I used to live in Chicago, which, if you've never been, gets God doesn't love you anymore cold in the winter. And there's four months of sunshine a year, and people are at least half drunk the whole time. And one way they stay that way is through amazing pub crawls. Like, I was on a clown pub crawl in Chicago where 85 men and women dressed as clowns. Half of us took acid, which, oh, that won't snap your brain in half. Yes, it will. It really will. And we hired a sober guy to drive us to bars. Unannounced. Did not tell any of the bars that 85 drunken acid-headed clowns were coming to their establishments. You can imagine the carnage. Like, we'd go into, like, old man bars, and the guy's like, slow night. What the hell? Time to do shots. Just having a blast. And at one point, we were leaving a Chili's that I'm pretty sure we set on fire. Yeah. And we're halfway across Michigan Avenue, which is like eight lanes wide, right? We're halfway across. And there's a cop in the squad car. Well, we didn't know a cop was in the squad car. We thought the squad car was a dragon. We were that high. It's a dragon. Oh, it's asleep, though. Clowns go. And we cross the street. And we're halfway across, and the cop gets in his loudspeaker. We've never had a cop talk to you through a loudspeaker. It's meant to be heard over a riot, right? Super loud. And he's like, hey, hey! And we stopped in the middle of the street, like, did you hear that too? Or what was it? <laughs> but we didn't just stop. We, like, pop lock breakdance froze. Like, what, what, hmm, right? <laughs> so scared. And we each took on, like, a different casual pose, like a hive mind of drunk clowns. What time is it? I have a newspaper. I'm walking a dog. No, you're not. You're not blending in, you stupid forest of frozen clowns. And we're totally still, and it's dead silent. It's the kind of silence before a gunfight in the Old West. Like, all you can hear is tumbleweeds and wind. And the cop gets back in his loudspeaker, swear to God, goes... <coughs> Quit clowning around. Son of a bitch! Oh, hilarious cop! You made me pee my clown suit. Well done. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Matt Bronger, everybody. Matt Bronger. That is my show. Thank you. Good night. I've been Pete Helms, Matt Bronger. Yeah.